Today we're making gevulde koek, which means filled cookie or filled cake. It is a flat pastry filled with almond paste that dates back to the 16th century. Back then it had some different names, such as gevulde herenkoek, filled lord's cake, or uh, gevuld heertje, which would mean filled little lord. And by lord I mean a landowner or someone who was knighted. That, to me, I think, is an indication that back then almonds were a luxury item and these pastries were reserved for the aristocracy. Hi, I'm Twan and welcome to my kitchen. If you're new to this channel, I focus on cooking foods from my home country, the Netherlands, and some of its former colonies, such as Indonesia. I love all things almond, and apparently so do the Dutch in general which is probably why the last several pastries or cookies I've made had almonds in it or almonds as a optional additive. I'll post links to those recipes in the description below. I love gevulde koeken. They remind me of train stations because the kiosks typically had them under a light so that when you would eat them they would still be warm. The best ones of course are the ones you buy at a patisserie or the ones you make at home. Growing up we didn't eat gevulde koeken at home very often because they're rather large, about 10 centimeters, four inches, and very rich with almond paste. So that was always a special treat whenever we would get them. The first thing we're going to make is amandel spice, almond paste. I like making it from scratch, but if you don't want to take the time, you can just buy it at a local grocery store. We'll need 250 grams of sugar, 250 grams of blanched almonds with the skin removed, one egg, and the zest of half a lemon. Making almond paste is not difficult. All you'll need is a food processor. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the sugar, the almonds, and the lemon zest. Put the lid on there. And now we're going to pulse it. What you want to make sure of is that you're not turning this into almond butter. So just pulse it until it becomes almost like almond flour or almond meal. Don't take it any further. And then we're going to add the egg. Here we go. This is going to make noise. Some people will also add a few drops of almond extract to this to enhance the almond flavor. It also makes it so you don't have to let it rest too long to develop the flavors. I'm going to just check for the consistency to make sure there are no more big pieces of almond in here and everything has uh, been cut into tiny little pieces and it definitely looks good. So now I'm going to add the egg and pulse it until it forms a paste. I like to kind of scrape down the sides uh, for two reasons. A, it makes sure that everything gets incorporated and it also lets me feel what the consistency of the mixture is so far. I think it needs to go a little bit longer. You know it's done when you can form it into a ball. It's gonna be a little bit sticky. So what we're going to do is we're gonna form it into one big ball and wrap it uh, with cling film and let it rest in the fridge for at least an hour. Be careful removing the blade from the bowl. It's very sticky and it is very firm. So if it feels extremely dry, um, you can add a little bit of water while you're uh, still have it in the machine, but mine is perfect. I'm gonna wrap it, make sure it is completely airtight. And now we're gonna let this rest in the fridge for at least an hour, preferably for a day or two. To make the dough, you will need 300 grams of all-purpose flour, 120 grams of super fine sugar, 180 grams of butter, one egg yolk, one tablespoon of milk, the zest of half a lemon, one teaspoon of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna use a hand mixer today. So I have a glass bowl. I put some anti-slip underneath it to just secure the bowl to the board so it doesn't uh, shift around while I'm doing this. And we're going to add the sugar, the butter, all the butter, 
the lemon zest and the salt. And using the hand mixer on slow, we're going to cream this all together. I'm going to use the spatula to scrape the edges of the bowl. One way to know that this is done is when it has gotten a very pale color and it all is very light and fluffy. I think it needs just a little bit more. I think this is done. Let's add the egg, the milk. I'm going to scrape the edges. Then we're going to beat this together. When I add the flour and baking powder, I'm actually going to be using my hands. So I'm scraping off anything that is stuck to the beaters to make sure nothing gets wasted and add it to the bowl with the creamed butter. I'm going to mix the baking powder through the flour before I add it to the creamed butter. So before I start kneading it with my hands, I'm going to add just a little bit at a time or stir it with the spatula. When everything is in there, I will switch to my hands and start kneading it. Last little bit. So we're not kneading it to develop gluten. We're just kneading it to make sure everything comes together as one ball of dough. With my hands, I'm going to knead it until it is all incorporated and I can shape it into a ball. So you know it's done when it doesn't really stick to your hands anymore and you can push it into a ball. You also won't see any more streaks of white flour in here. I'm going to wrap it with cling film and then put it in the fridge for at least an hour. While the dough is resting in the fridge, now is a great time for you to click the like and subscribe button. It will really help our channel. And if you want YouTube to notify you whenever we post a new video, you can click on the bell. It's time to make the filling. We're not going to use pure almond paste for this. We're actually thinning it out with one egg yolk and a tablespoon of water. So we only need about half of the almond paste we made. We need 240 grams. Now with the remainder, what I typically do is put it in a zip top baggie and then roll it out thin and put it in the freezer. That way when I want to use it again, it thaws very quickly. The first thing I'm going to do is put the almond paste in there and using my handy dandy pole label, I'm actually going to break it apart a little bit so that the beaters will have an easier time incorporating the egg and the water into it. So just break it apart. Add one egg yolk, tablespoon of water. Start on a low speed so nothing flies up and then we'll increase speed. So this is done, it's a nice paste. And now what I'm going to do is weigh this and then divide it into 12 even pieces. So the total of this weighs approximately 250 grams. So divided by 12, that makes somewhere between 20 and 21 grams each. So I have teared my scale and I'm going to try to put 20 grams of the paste into like individual servings in this dish so that I can then easily add them to the gevulde cooker. I've set the oven to preheat to 220 degrees Celsius or 425 degrees Fahrenheit in non-convection mode. I've cut the ball of dough from the fridge into two even pieces and I'm going to first uh, knead it a little bit by hand and then I will flour the board and roll it out to a sheet that is approximately three millimeters or an eighth of an inch uh, thin. It's a little bit crumbly. Don't put too much pressure on, on it because it has a tendency to crack and we're just going to keep rolling it until it is nice and thin. I used a 10 centimeter, four inch round cutter to cut out as many circles as I could. In order to optimize the dough, I cut the circles as close together as possible. Mm -hmm. 
I kneaded the scraps back together, formed them into a ball and rolled it out. I cut more circles out of it and put those on the cookie sheet. Unfortunately, this time, out of this half of the dough, I couldn't get 12 circles, but only 10. I repeated all of this for the second half of dough and cut 10 more circles out. 10 of them will be the bottom and 10 of them will be the top of the pastry. I took one sheet with circles out of the fridge and these are gonna be my bottoms. So I'm going to take a dollop of the almond paste and put it on each one. It's very sticky. I'm going to have two little dollops of almond paste that I won't be using. I've added filling to each circle, so I'm going to spread out the filling, leaving a one and a quarter centimeter around the edge. That's about half an inch because that's the border we're going to use to crimp the top and the bottom together. So I'm using a little bowl with water to actually spread it out with my finger. It's a little bit easier. I'm just wetting my fingertip just enough to make it so the almond paste doesn't stick. With a little silicon brush, I'm going to wet the edges of the dough that don't have almond paste. You don't wanna make it too wet, just wet enough that the two layers will stick together. I put the first top on uh, one of the bottoms when I took this straight out of the fridge. And as you can see, it was too cold. The dough started cracking. So I let them sit for approximately five minutes. Now they are soft enough and I'm just going to put them on top. Try to line it up best you can. And now with a fork, we're going to crimp the edges together. Make sure you go all the way around so that it is completely closed. We're going to place an almond in the middle of each of the cookies. That is the very traditional design, but you can get creative and make a star with three almonds per Per cookie I've seen that as well and then we are going to brush them with egg wash one egg two teaspoons of water go over the almond as well because the typical look is that the almond has that same kind of glossy exterior as the egg wash dough so you want to just cover the entire top with egg wash I'm now going to put them in the oven and they need to bake for somewhere between 13 and 18 minutes but after approximately eight minutes Eight minutes, I'm going to check them and most likely uh, rotate the cookie sheet because our oven has a couple of hot spots and that way they are not browning unevenly. It's been eight minutes and as you can see, they're not browning evenly. So I'm going to rotate the cookie sheet and look again after five minutes to see if they're done. So five minutes has passed for a total of 13 minutes and they are done. They are beautifully golden brown. So I'm going to take them out and put them on a rack to cool. So the center row here is definitely perfect color, nice and golden brown. The ones closer to the back or the front of the oven are a little bit darker than I would like. They do crack a little bit in the oven, that always happens. But as you can see, there is a nice gloss over each of the almonds. These look very good. So now we're gonna let them sit on the rack and cool off before we try one. I've waited long enough. It's time to eat them. I took one that is slightly overdone because I don't want to serve it to our friends. Let's take a look at the inside. You can see the almond paste on the inside, very thin crust. And now let's try, uh, let, try a bite. It's smakelijk. Mm. The crust is buttery. The almond paste on the inside is delicious, but that's no surprise because I absolutely love almond paste. Overall, just a fantastic pastry. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please click the like and subscribe button and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I'll post the recipe on my website, twanskitchen.com, and you can follow me on social media. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.